Classic Truck Rescue. Last week on Classic Truck Rescue, I introduced you to Ram Jam, my Montana truck. Jamie and I went and rescued this and another truck from Montana last summer, right after we got finished cutting the house in half. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to Ram Jam because I kind of just dived into working on it and putting some parts on it to make it more complete before working on it. I guess I had to convince myself that it was worthy of working on. A lot of people wouldn't have bought this truck. It's got some issues and I'll show them to you. But it has some good things about it too. I got it pretty cheap. It was a package deal on two of them. I needed the other one for the frame for a truck that I'm going to do this year. But I bought this because it's a factory Napco four-wheel drive V8 four-speed truck. And I had that fleet side bed sitting over there by the stream for years. We had put it on cinder blocks, put some plywood over it, and put a picnic table tablecloth on it for our wedding. And it's been there for parties and everything else. But it was a bed, it's a short fleet side bed with all of the correct factory stainless trim on it. They're hard to come by. And that one's really solid and really straight. So I was saving it for the right truck. And Ram Jam is the right truck. The cab on this truck is toast. Completely gone. Like I said, I bought it for the running gear. I didn't even see under the hood until I was actually out in Montana. Frankly, I didn't care what was under the hood. I knew there was an engine in it, but I didn't know the condition. The cab shot and like i said i bought it for a foundation for a bill but i think there were a few good surprises and i'll take you around the truck we'll look at it underneath under the hood i'll show you the horrible cab now another thing is the cab is a big job switching it out but not that big a job if you've been watching the channel for as long as it's been on there you know i've taken a lot of cabs on and off not a big deal for me and I do have some nice big window cabs. I may be changing this to a big window because it's going to have all of the desirable options for a 59 Chevy Apache truck. And why not put the big window on it with the stainless trim on the cab to go along with the bed? I think it's worthy of it. But right now my focus is just to, you know, put some bolts in the bed so it doesn't fall off. I put some wheels and hubcaps on it. I like them. I'll splice in a picture of a truck with the tires that I want to put on these rims. I think it'll give me the right look it's all factory look but I like the way they looked when they were new it does have every bit of the Napco gear let's take a walk around it and I'll show you the innards of Ram Jam we'll just do a walk around on it real quick like I said I put the correct 16 inch wheels with beauty rings and the correct factory hub caps on it. I just took an old set of caps and painted them up real quick. I used a paint marker pen for the bow ties on it. Just something to put on there. But these wheels with the tires that this truck would have been outfitted with when it was new look really good. And I'll splice in a picture here to show you. One of the first things I'm going to do after I get it running is to put a chrome front bumper on it. I think I have a good chrome grill for it. I also have, uh, they were only available on GMCs, but I'm a, I'm a big into shiny stuff, guys. So I'm going to put a set of polished stainless steel headlight bezels on it. Also, this truck should have a big V on the hood emblem because it's a V8 truck. And let's see. And I think that'll dress the front up quite a bit, but once you do that, after putting the stainless steel trimmed bed on it, I kind of have to put a big window cab on it with the stainless that runs around here. And then I thought, I'm either gonna do the inside of the spear here, red or white, and I'll do the same thing on the cab where the stainless steel trim makes the break. 
I'm also probably going to put a set of West Coast mirrors on it because I have lots of them and I just like big mirrors on a truck, especially a tall truck. So, the bed's on, the tires and wheels are on. This bed's actually in really nice shape. I'm probably just going to put two pieces of plywood in here. I'll cut them so they go around the fender wells. This is just something I want to plop together to make a run around the ranch truck out of. And we'll get the bed secured on here and get a good floor in it so I can haul stuff. Uh, so, bed, like I said, it's real solid, even on the bottoms of the rear. Got all of the correct factory stainless. And these, which I haven't seen before, but I kind of have to think they're made for it. They're shaped right. I haven't seen those on a, one of these trucks before. The trim needs a little straight in here and there, but it's in pretty good shape. And guys can do amazing things with that trim now. Also, it has a broken two, I guess, broken lenses on the cab lights those are the correct lights uh, they're period correct for this truck those are KD 517 cab marker lights and I do have a lot of them and a lot of lenses for them so we'll get those working and all good glass on them the fenders fiberglass <laughs> we'll be replacing those The doors are shot, cab's shot. Okay, here, let me show you the deal with the cab. The cab is so shot that it's not on there straight. I don't know if you can tell or not, but the bottom is closer to the bed than the top. And that bed is in the right position. So the cab has sunk in the front and that's cocked the back over a little bit. I'll show you what the problem here. So somebody took a patch panel and just screwed it onto there, but it, that doesn't give it any support right here. Now I'm gonna cobble this together for right now. And also look at this, where they patched the floor, it's buckled right here. And it has actually pushed the patch up. So, and you can see it buckled over there and you can see the mount with the bolt head right there has actually come up through the floor. This this over there, look at that, wow. So this cab shot. And also somebody knocked the brains out of it like so many of us did back in the 70s. So definitely a cab. I kind of like the little tool rack that somebody built. You could get a tool rack for these trucks as an accessory back in the day. And I actually have one of the originals you may remember from a video I made a couple of years ago when I bought out a guy's parts collection after he had finished playing with trucks. I'm hoping this gas tank's not bad. I know it's not hooked up to the engine, but I'd like to get the factory fuel system working. We'll see how lucky we get here. A problem that I do have is I noticed the ignition switch hanging here and a key, but this key only goes one click so this key is out of a truck that had a stomp start that's a trucks that are equipped with a starter pedal right here that yeah, I call them stomp starts but there was a pedal that you would push right here to start this truck didn't have one of those but this ignition switch is out of a truck that was equipped that way so it only goes over one position and then it doesn't go any further. And a normal ignition goes a little further and then it's spring-loaded to hit your starter. Well, this one you just turned on and you hit your pedal starter. So I've got to round up a correct ignition switch for this, which means we get to play with my master keys today because I'm gonna take it out of a cab that I don't have the keys for. Okay, here's your first clue that it's a original napco four-wheel drive it still has the decal which they started putting on them when they started building them in the factory the older ones that came for instance 55 through 7 55 through the first half of 57 you could only get a napco kit 
installed after you bought your truck uh, the dealer would install it or you'd have a shop install it and that would come with a metal plate that usually got screwed to the dashboard that shows you the shifting pattern for the napco transfer case i always like that little truck going up the hill so it has that it has the correct napco transfer case shifter on it back here you can see that it's got the correct napco lift blocks the napco lift blocks have that arm that comes over and i believe uh, that arm is designed into the lift block because once you raise it up you put that rubber snubber right there that's mounted to the bottom of the frame you put it up higher so that bracket comes out so that it will hit the rubber snubber but i would say if you ever bottom this out far enough for that lift block to hit that rubber uh you you'd be you'd probably be in pain fiberglass fender so it's got to go where i'm leaving all this stuff on i'm leaving it like it is now there's a series problem over here on the driver's side also this uh the grill mount is bad on it it's all rusted out right there that's i'm not worried about sheet metal on this truck i've got tons of sheet metal for these fiberglass is chipped right here and i love these patch panels they put on the the door so you gotta love them okay there's the problem with the cab look at that look at that and i'm sure that's what turned a lot of people off you know they opened the door and saw that and said i'm not buying it i don't know but no seat <laughs> why does that have hinges on it right there what 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 is that universal joint a spare u joint folks hmm okay i don't know what that's for we're showing sixteen thousand six hundred and twenty four miles wow those are actually pretty straight aren't they no way in heck does this have sixteen thousand miles i love the color though look at that color and you can see that was the factory color i really like that uh i looked it up paint codes on here it said sherwood green uh one thing i did like about this truck was that on the title it says four wheel drive and it's hard to get one of these old trucks that actually says it's a four wheel drive on the title um i'm thinking <laughs> it's going to be a while before i have time to build a truck for myself to do it right so i may go get a wasted cab that i have and cut this whole section out with the step and everything and just self tap it the heck out of it you know to kind of go with the theme of the really nice <laughs> the really nice patch panels on the doors let's have a sniff hmm that actually doesn't smell too bad i might get lucky there okay so also it's got the correct napco front axle and those caps right there for the top of the leaf springs are correct for the napco another thing and a lot of people know this i get that but some people don't i guess i'm gonna get dirty normally i have a pad that i would lay on under here anyway i'm gonna get you a shot hopefully hopefully of the napco transfer case Ooh. it's got its correct transfer case and the drive shafts and all of that here's something that i found interesting the oil filter that is a very old style oil filter right there look at that it's even got the dust cover on the the clutch cover on the transmission hardly ever see those with some dualies the exhaust doesn't look i mean it's tiny but it doesn't i've seen worse and they're not flopping around maybe if we can get it running it might sound halfway decent 
got the exit right before the differential type setup. Yeah. You can see where this is broke loose right here. And here's where you can see the problem with the body. Uh, it is, it's folding down around the frame. That's just horrible right there. But not a big deal. I've got good cabs. The cabs we have. That's a shot. Look at that. Holy cow. All right. And there's your Napco transfer case tag. All right, let's go take a look under the hood. So again, I didn't see any pictures under the hood of this truck before I bought it. I bought it for the four wheel drive gear. But, I was very pleasantly surprised. You're not gonna stay up, there you go. I was very, oh, tried to haunt me. I was very pleasantly surprised when I did look under the hood. That is the correct 283 that this truck probably came with. That's a V8 fan. Ow. Oh. I'll be right back. As I get older, when I get conked on my head, or I trip and fall, and wind up experiencing unnecessary pain, it almost hurts more, I think, to realize that it could have been avoided than the actual pain. You know what I mean? Oh. Wow. I'm not certain on this, but... I think that's the correct factory air cleaner for this truck. Wow. That is one big carburetor on there how's she doing it's not locked up still got soft rubber on it that's the correct glass bulb fuel filter on there wow i like it oh been a while since that's been used the bottom's rotted out of it hmm huh. It gives me hope though. Hmm. What is that? Oh, that goes to the fuel tank. Well, now. I may try blowing the fuel system out on this thing. Looks like the choke was converted to manual. original generator this is a good sign this is something that you want to see on a you know on a 65 year old truck the wiring is all intact it doesn't look like it's had a wire cut on it at all wow mud dauber yeah i don't see any cut wires on this thing that's nice this might not be that hard to get running, folks. Wouldn't that be nice? Anyway, I was very pleased when I opened up the hood and saw that. Clean oil, a little low. It says add, but it's clean. We'll get some oil. Oh, I already got oil for it. That's right, I did. Well, that gives me hope. What's going on in here? I don't see anything, but we'll see how low it is. Oh, a little green antifreeze on the bottom of the cap. All right, folks, 
I'm gonna just set you up on the tripod. I'm gonna get my oil topped off, get the radiator topped off, throw a battery in, and I'm probably gonna take this bolt out of the end of this fuel line that goes to the tank and see what happens when I blow through there. Let's get started on it. I'm excited to get old Ram Jam, my Montana truck running. I'll be back. That's not bad. Use less than a half a gallon on the well I put water in it and it's straight water and as you can see it's real green so that means it's had antifreeze in it at least we know the box not cracked but I was thinking about the box being cracked and I realized I haven't even checked this puppy to see if it's locked up yet I could probably do that make sure it's in neutral Nope, not locked up. We'll go ahead and spin it over a few times without any fuel or ignition to uh, get some oil circulating. But first, I gotta go find a key. Oh, and I gotta put a little oil in it. I do like the way they uh, did the oil fill on these old small block Chevys from the 50s and 60s. It's what you call an easy access. It wasn't low, so I'm just gonna add oil in small increments. That looks pretty good, actually. I do like those Chevrolet script valve covers. Yeah, I do like these valve covers. I've seen dirtier engines. You guys watch for smoke. <laughs> Make sure nothing's smoking inside. Because that's a brand new battery. I just figured I might as well stack the deck in my favor. Okay. You should have some juice going on. Let's see if anything works. Lights go big. I know the tail lights aren't going to work. <laughs> they aren't hooked up yet. No lights. Well, that's not encouraging, is it, folks? I wonder if the key has to be on. Key is on. Looks like it's not getting any power at all. Hmm. 
What's that? Nobody home anywhere. All right. I wonder if my battery needs charged. My brand new battery. That would be lame. I actually grabbed a hold of this cheapo circuit tester, 12 volt light tester, and uh, was gonna move it out of the way so that I could look for my, my good one. And it occurred to me that a light tester that works is a good one. Hmm, that's concerning. So we do have volts. We just don't have any volts being transmitted into the cab. That's not good. That's no bueno. I really think, you know, on these old trucks, everything runs through the ignitions. Well, it wasn't on. Everything runs through the ignition switch. And no radio. Oh, <laughs> folks, I just hit that button right there, and oh, that's encouraging. You know what? No, I'm gonna make sure the coil wire's off. I don't think it's got any way to get any fuel right now. Yeah, it's not gonna start. I'm gonna spin it over a little bit and get some oil pressures going. Don't wanna burn that old starter up. I don't know how long it's been sitting, but I see there's nothing happening down there in the fuel bowl. Okay, well, let's see if with the key on, we're getting 12 volts to the coil. Let's check that out. The reason that had the surprise push button start on the dashboard is because, like I told you, it's the wrong ignition switch. That ignition switch is for a stomp start setup, which this doesn't require, obviously, if you can push a button and get the starter to turn over. Oh, she's hot. She's hot at the coil, folks. You know what? I'm gonna do something just for the heck of it. Hmm. This vehicle, if it had fuel, should run. Okay, so I went and did exactly what I told myself I wasn't gonna do with this truck is I hooked up a high performance racing fuel system because I want to see if the engine will run before I start digging into the fuel system. I'm gonna let you guys sit out here and watch. I have a good feeling about this one, I do. I just have a good feeling about it. Still gotta get a seat and a step and all that other stuff. Uh, I wonder how the choke goes on this thing. <sighs> See if we can get some fuel up to that fuel bowl first. <clears throat> Not yet. Still no fuel up there. Wonder if the fuel pump's not working. Maybe I should crack that line loose.
Oh, the choke is all the way closed. Huh. Open that up just a little bit. The choke is all the way closed. Do you have a lever pulled out somewhere? Because I didn't see one. Oh, did I have the ignition on? Yeah, I did. <laughs> did you just honk? I know you did. I wonder if it's getting any fuel up there yet. Fuel pump might be bad. Yeah, I'm not getting anything up there. Hmm. I wonder if it's plugged up. Maybe we've got an airlock type situation going on here. It's not pumping any fuel. I heard you. I heard it, folks. I heard things. I heard things. Try to get as much of that into that float vent tube as I can. I did hear something that sounded pretty nice, though. It sounded encouraging. Yeah, it's got to be fixed.
boy, she didn't sound very happy. Oh, look, fuel in the fuel bowl. Very nice. Very nice. We'll just move this out of the way then. I'll go ahead and put a little more in there. Just for the heck of it. No. <laughs> Mmm, it's got that, <laughs> that, that smell, that, that I haven't run in a million years smell going on. Make sure I'm neutral. We got idle, folks. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, God. Broke kill. Broke kill in the exhaust. Oh. Oh my goodness, you should smell it, but folks, you should smell it. It's horrible. Got a little smoke coming out of that right bank. I'll let her let her idle for a minute. I know it's got the fluids it needs. Maybe I can adjust the card a little bit. Oh, Ram Jam actually does not sound that bad, folks. Not bad at all. I just don't want to get any of that junk that's on top of the engine, inside the engine. Wow, sounds pretty good. A little pop in here and there. how how well it starts back up when you shut her down oh and if it will shut down <laughs> oh that's good let's do a little something about this ignition hanging we'll do a delete on the ignition switch and wires hanging down from under the dash I'd sure like to know what that's for but right now I just want to put the ignition switch where it belongs what's going on not give me enough threads that's the incorrect switch for this truck Had to put that ring on backwards to get it to work. It starts right up. It's pretty good. You got to tap the gas to start it, but that was pretty good. Whoa.
better. That's a custom fit right there. Oh boy. Don't ever drive a truck that's this junky. Even on private property. Because it's just wrong. It's got clutch. Nobody home in brake land. You guys be careful. You be careful driving this thing around with no brakes. Oh, do I got no clutch too? Oh, I got clutch. The clutch do need to be lubricated just a little. It's actually hanging up on the floor. I could hear the, the disc. Wonder when's the last time this guy took a drive. I just want to see if the tranny and rear end and all that works. Yeah, I got that clutch pedal. It's hanging up on the floor. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, that's not bad. Come on, give me third. What's the issue with third? Oh. that stand out to you when you first get one of these old things running like that clutch <laughs> because all the rot this cab's got in it. Boy, I do like the turning radius on this thing. It turns really sharp. Okay, we'll go through the gears one time now. Everything's a little crusty right now. There's first. Second, third, fourth, right on. Yeah, it was just, the shifter was kind of froze up. I killed it because I let it out while it was in gear, but I think we're okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll get a little photo off if that camera's still running.
What's that first step? It's a doozy. That first step's a doozy. All right, well. Rim Jam lives. <laughs>